Last week, I looked like a serial killer, and this week, I look like a uh, prepubescent teen. <sighs> if you are new here, welcome, guys. My name is Daniel Wright, and I am starting a new series called How to Houseplant. So in this series, I'm going to post a video every Friday on a rare or coveted house plant. And I'm going to tell you pr literally everything that you need to know um, to be able to grow this plant indoors, kind of outdoors, really just depends on what climate you're in. But you're going to have all the answers that you need by the time you're done watching this video. I don't want this to be like the videos that I watched in uh, Greenhouse in high school where I slept through them all. Anyways, this week... On episode one, we're talking about Philodendron Gloriosum. Now, some of you probably don't want to watch through this whole thing. Some of you might. I hope that you do. But if you don't want to, I'm going to put timestamps of every single different topic and where you can skip to to get to that topic. Before we get started, let's talk about today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is actually a Facebook page called Plants Across America. Whether you're a buyer, a seller, a collector, or if you're just someone looking for a community to share your similar interests with, uh, or any and every type of information you're going to be able to find in this Facebook page. I am obsessed. I buy routinely from this Facebook page. The moderators that I have recently joined um, I have, are amazing. Uh, they, they're extremely active on the page, and you will have no trouble getting in contact with me or one of them. So I'm going to put a link in the description box below, and I highly encourage you to click on the link and join the family that we're growing get started because I've been rambling for a hot minute. Philodendron gloriosum is an aeroid. Now, you might be asking yourself, what the heck is an aeroid? Well, you know what? I'll tell you. An aeroid is just basically a general term to help group certain types of plants with the same characteristics together. Um, so that way, immediately when you hear aeroid, you kind of have a general idea of how to grow them, their characteristics, propagation, things of that nature that I'm going to go over with you here. Most of the time, most of the time, because you will learn very quickly in the plant world, things aren't necessarily set in stone, but most of the time an aeroid is characterized by its heart-shaped leaf and its flower, which is essentially is a spadix, and the petal, which is what you know we call layman's terms, kind of wraps around the spadix as it opens up. Let's get down to the nitty-gritty of Gloriosum and just the overall description of what the plant consists of and why people like it so much. This is a Philodendron Gloriosum. Most of you, if not all of you, probably already know what this looks like, but I kind of want to show you a little bit more in detail on why this plant is beautiful and coveted and everybody wants one. Let's take a closer look the adaxial side, which essentially is just another word for the front portion of the leaf, consists of beautiful vibrant green leaves, and they kindly they have like a slight yellow veining with them, and they've got heavy white divisions in the leaves. And this, this is essentially the star of the show. You're going to learn very, very quickly that most people take this specific term and section at face value when people are collecting and they, they like plants. Um, now, some people buy other plants for different reasons. For example, some plants have a petiole or a stem that is fuzzy. I kind of like that. So, you know, I tend to lean more towards that side as far as collecting plants. Um, but we're going to get into that in the next couple of weeks whenever we talk about plants in specifics that actually have those. Now, the abaxial side, which is the back, is a little plain, to be honest with you. It's, it's mostly green, but you can see the vein indentations in the back of this, which, you know, the, party, the party's in the front this time. The party's in the front. The roots of a philodendron are pretty much thick. If you take a little bit of a closer look here, um, you're going to see that the root system that this plant creates is actually pretty stable, pretty good, for lack of a better term. When the roots are thick like that, that generally means that the plant is going to have a better nutrient absorbent system. Um, it's going to be a little bit more stable and it can take a little bit of wear and tear. Um, that's not always set in stone, but in this case it is because that means Gloriosum uh, makes a really good house plant because it's resilient. All right, so let's move on to the taxonomy part, which we're kind of getting into my favorite part here. 
because I had to dig and dig and dig on Wikipedia. <laughs> Just kidding, I didn't have to dig that hard. But I'm gonna slide the taxonomy portion basically kind of right here on this side of the screen for you to see. Um, because I'm not gonna lie, I can't pronounce some of these. And the reason that I wanted to bring the taxonomy portion into this series is because there are so many people who post plants for sale and they'll say, philodendron monstera blah 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 um i don't think a lot of people understand that so that's why i'm doing this to kind of bring this to light um if you see a description and it says philodendron monstera plant that's not correct that gets on my nerves so bad <laughs> if you know anything about plants then you're going to know that's wrong um because that's just a misclassification they throw that in there to catch your attention so that because they want your money don't fall for that but another reason that i wanted to bring in taxonomy is the fact that you can have another separate category down here that's not scientifically listed. Um, and I really don't think they should list it because it, it's, it's really complicated. This is the part where I actually did have to dig. And that is forms and hybrids. I honestly have mixed reviews about this. This is the philodendron round form. If you want to bring this picture up to take a look at it. Now, I, I have this. I'm confused a little bit about this because... A philodendron gloriosum, when it's small, it tends to just look a little flimsy. The leaves look a little wrinkly looking like it's kind of unstable. It's not sure if it's going to live, but that's just how they look. When they get larger and the leaves get a little bit more established, they start rounding out anyway. Um, so there's so many articles and things out there that says philodendron gloriosum round form. And I'm not entirely sure if that's a legit form or it could just be a philodendron that has reached the certain size where the leaves start looking like that. And it's grown under very, very, very ideal conditions. So honestly, I'm not entirely sure about the round form. And I'm also not entirely sure about this next one that's a lot popular. It's a lot popular. Listen to me. Which, which is the philodendron gloriosum dark form. This picture looks a lot more saturated. And this picture looks like a, lot, a very deeper green. And I've seen philodendron dark form listed on NSA Tropicals, which is a very, very credible website. And someone that has over 20 years worth of experience growing and collecting plants. So if they say that there's a philodendron dark form out there, I'm gonna trust them. All right, so we're just going to go to the next one, which is a philodendron glorious, which is a gloriosum crossed with a melochrysum. I will have melochrysum up in a couple weeks if you don't know what that is. But the reason that my favorite hybrid is the glorious is because of the elongated leaves that it's got and like it has a lot of a sharper point in the heart-shaped leaf. I like that it's elongated. It looks, it just looks I don't know, almost more, more organic to me. Um, and from the research that I've done, from what I've heard from other people, this is a little bit more stable and easier to ship and care for in terms of being a house plant. Let's move on to how to care for these little bad boys. Let's start with light. Bright, indirect light. Most aeroids are epiphytic plants, which means they usually grow on top of something else or they climb up a tree, which means they're used to getting dabbled. Dabble, is it dappled or dabbled? Anyways, they're used to being underneath trees or underneath the skyline, which means that they're not gonna get the harsh rays of the sun. If you give them the harsh rays of the sun, the leaves are gonna burn and you're just gonna have a dead plant very quickly. Um, ideally, you wanna keep this between 55 degrees to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is that makes this very ideal for a house plant because most of us like to keep our thermostats, um, if you're human, between 68 to 72 degrees. Some people like less, some people like more. Either way, it's in that threshold for the Gloriosum to do well. Watering. Now, watering is also very simple. They like to have 
I don't want to say wet feet, but they like to stay moist, which is a word I also don't like. So I kind of have a rule of thumb on this. Um, stick your finger in the soil about two inches. And if those two inches are dry, water your plant because that means that it's starting to dry out to the point where it might not be unhappy. And since they like to stay moist, then you know, you're gonna, you're gonna need to just keep that up. I'm not gonna tell you how often to water your plant because to be honest with you, that's gonna be completely different depending on your climate um, and a lot of other factors. If it's growing very quickly and it's pushing out a new leaf, water consumption is gonna go up. So you're gonna need to water it more. Um, if you have it in very, very bright light or bright indirect light, I should say, then you, you might need to water a little more. If you have it pulled back away from a window and it's in a corner and it's getting medium light, you're not going to need to water that one as much. So I don't really like to tell you water your plant every week because that's not ideal and realistic. If you stick your finger in the top two inches of soil and that is dry, water it. Fertilizer. This is a very important topic and I don't think a lot of people really realize this. If you're paying a lot of money for a rare or coveted plant or an aeroid that you've always wanted, you're going to want to take care of it properly, which means you're not going to want to buy cheap ass fertilizer. And yes, I, I just said ass in case you were wondering. The reason that you don't want to buy cheap fertilizer is because there, there I mean, there's a reason that it's cheap. Cheap fertilizer has a heavier salt content, which in turn damages and slowly burns up your roots. Um, there's a difference between salts and micronutrients. A plant needs both. You need to invest in a pretty good fertilizer. Um, I personally use a homemade aeroid soil mix, which I'm going to show you in just a second, but I'm also going to tell you that I actually have been experimenting for the past two months with a semi hydroponic, um, fertilizer that I can use for LECA. And it also says that I can use for, um, soil that doesn't have any nutrients already in it. Um, so that's what I do. And my, so far my plants love it and they're doing great. All right, humidity. Humidity is important, actually. When you're talking about aeroids, humidity is important. It's actually really important to make sure that your plant, the environment that your plant is in, doesn't go below 40%. And that's actually really, really good for a gloriosum, and that's why these plants are kind of a little bit more resilient, because that's really close to the temperatures that are in most people's home already. Now, I personally have humidifiers all in my grow room because I want my plants to do well and I want them to grow faster and have bigger leaves and just, you know, kind of get as close as I can to the environment that they're in. So if you want to get just a small humidifier to set beside your Gloriosum to just kind of keep that humidity level up around it, it's going to do a little bit better than just opposed to like 40%. Container size, which is something I don't see a lot of people talking about. This is important. This is a big deal, people. You listen, are you listening? Are you here? The growth pattern of a gloriosum is actually very, very simple. That shit just likes to shoot sideways. <laughs> if it's not in a pot that's wide enough for it to grow that way, it's going to do one of two things. And I've actually seen this on YouTube a lot. A lot of people are complaining that when their gloriosum puts out a new leaf, the old one dies because the plant is trying to grow sideways. And since it can't grow sideways, then one of two things are gonna happen. The leaves at the edge of the pot are gonna start dying and it's gonna start trying to look for ways to sprout new leaves. So when it sprouts a leaf, that leaf that's at the edge is gonna die. Or if you're really lucky, if you're really lucky, then it's gonna hop the pot. And once it hops the pot, that's where you get pictures like this and like this, because it's hopped the pot, it's continuing to grow horizontally, and it's sprouting out these huge, really big leaves because, I mean, it's growing bigger, it's starting to do a little bit better because it's not contained in a smaller pot. So honestly, I've seen people do this. Um, I've seen people buy planters that are like 
horizontal and they'll plant their gloriosum in one end and then it'll just grow horizontally and then it, you'll just have a bunch of different beautiful gloriosum leaves in like a rectangular shape and i think that's really cool and beautiful um so i would highly recommend something like that so this is what i like to do for my plants you're going to want some coconut coir or qua coconut qua coir we don't know this is a little bit more fibrous than just soil and it doesn't break down when you water it well, okay, it doesn't break down as fast, um, but you'll get a good few years out of this before it starts to break down. So, and it retains moisture, but it doesn't retain it as long as like the potting soil that you buy from Lowe's. It dries out a little bit faster, but that's what an aeroid needs because it won't hold water to it. It just holds moisture, if that makes any sense to you. I like to do about 30% coconut quah, and then I like to do 30% orchid bark because orchid bark is gonna provide some aeration and it's gonna help your roots breathe. Then I like to go in with 30% perlite because it, it's a little bit smaller than orchid bark and it just provides a little bit more aeration. Then I like to do 10% vermiculite, which is worm castings. Those are a little bit more on the pricier side, but you can get them from Amazon. And what that basically does is it is kind of like a slow release fertilizer. If you're, if you're really feeling fancy, you can throw in some activated charcoal, but not a whole lot, just enough. Um, like maybe a couple hands full. What that does is it really, it like absorbs toxins that are unhealthy for your plant, but you have to make sure that you get horticultural charcoal. If you don't, then your, your plant might actually, it might die. But if you would like to purchase any of these, there's links in the description below of the potting soil mix that I like to make. If you have any questions about anything that I spoke about, or if you just want to come for me because I got something wrong, please put it in the comment section down below. Um, if you're watching this on the plant page, please subscribe to my channel. And I will also be watching comments in the description box and in the comment section of that post on the page. Um, kind of at the same time as soon as this video drops. So I'm going to be there to answer your questions and kind of guide you where you want to go. Um, but make sure you watch the whole video because I've pretty much covered most of everything that you need in order to take care of this plant. Um, and if you have beautiful gloriosum pictures, you can either comment them in the page comments where this is posted or you can tag me on my instagram which is going to be listed down below um, i really want to see your pictures i actually get up every single morning and just scroll through instagram and the page and just look at everyone's beautiful pictures because it makes me happy uh, <laughs> so i love you guys be sure to like this video put those comments down below subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next Friday with another plant video. Bye.